At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the next head coach of the Miami Dolphins, Jimmy. And the new year began dramatically in Miami, demanding and dynamic Jimmy Johnson, twice a Super Bowl winner with the Dallas Cowboys, returning to Miami, replacing the winningest coach in NFL history, Don Shula. The Jimmy Johnson era begins today on a hot, humid Southern Florida Sunday afternoon. Temperature over 100 degrees on the field. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the start of a new season with Phil Simms and Paul McGuire. And Jimmy Johnson brings to the NFL a collegiate spirit. Yeah, he really does. And I think it's evident in the five running backs that are dressed for this ballgame. Three of the running backs are rookies, and two of them are going to be starting. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Stanley Pritchett. And you know, you talk about the atmosphere in this camp. We asked Dan Marino yesterday, Dan, what was this camp truly like? He said, did you see the movie Full Metal Jacket? That's it. <laughs> I have a feeling New England, it was the same Phil Sims because Bill Parcells in talking with us last night looked at Phil and said, Sims, it's going to be the way it used to be around here. Oh, and that means for those players, that means it's he's going to go back to being the way he used to be. Mean, ornery, and tough. And Bill Parcells is all about attitude. That's the reason he's been successful in this league. So far this preseason, his team has shown that attitude. And last year, Many times he said to us, I have no flag bearers. In other words, leaders on the team. This year he has them on both sides of the ball. So a matchup of coaches today. In the last 10 years, they represent four Super Bowl championships. Johnson and Parcells. First, to our New York studios. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our studio here in New York. Let's quickly run through the scores of the early games today in the National Football League, beginning with the game in Baltimore. And the Ravens, uh, they make it a winner today. 19-14 is the final score, despite two Billy Joe Hobart to Tim Brown touchdown passes. In Jacksonville, the Jaguars beating up on the Pittsburgh Steelers today, 24-9. The bad news for the Steelers, a serious knee injury suffered by linebacker Greg Lloyd. In Indianapolis, the Colts beat the Cardinals today, 20 to 13. Jim Harbaugh temporarily knocked out of the game in the first half with a bruised right hand, but he finds rookie receiver Marvin Harrison for a 35-yard touchdown pass. Harrison's first in the NFL. Harbaugh's second of the game. The Colts start their season with a win. The final was 20 to 13. In Houston, the Oilers trailing the Kansas City Chiefs in the final moments 20 to 19. In Washington, the Eagles beat the Redskins for the eighth straight time, 17 to 14. In St. Louis, that game game down to the final moments and the Rams are leading the Cincinnati Bengals 23 to 16. Lawrence Phillips has scored two touchdowns for St. Louis today. In Minnesota, the Vikings lost Warren Moon to an ankle injury earlier. That game is tied at 10 in the fourth and Carolina all over the Atlanta Falcons today 26 to 6. We'll send you back to Miami. Welcome back to Miami. I'm Jim Gray. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to Jimmy Johnson and he said that he really had very little to say to his team in his pregame speech. He said he emphasized two points, simply have fun and relax. He didn't want to have any more because he didn't want to clutter their minds on game day. But there have been several messages in the Dolphin locker room all week long. Up on the bulletin board Jimmy Johnson has assembled, there is one main message. Get to the Patriots' $6 million man, Drew Bledsoe. Bill Parcells. They met four times in the NFC. Parcells won all four games. Giants against the Cowboys. Joe Nedney, the left-footed new kicker for Miami, sends it on its way. And this NFL season begins in Miami. Dave Meggett with the return. The former Giant breaks loose at the 30. Medney gets a piece of him and drags it out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Meggett with a sterling return, 41 yards. One of the reasons Jimmy Johnson kept Joe Nedney is he's supposed to kick that ball in the end zone. He didn't want to put his defense in tough position. And right there, you could see the big hole for Dave Meggett. The Miami Dolphins probably expecting that ball to be kicked in the end zone. Maybe we're a little surprised. Joe Parcells looks at Drew Bledsoe. Bledsoe from Washington State in his fourth year. A critical season, says Parcells, about Bledsoe's performance. And before the snap movement, forward wall. Flags are down. Bowens and Gardner make the tackle as they sort out the penalty. Let's take a look at the New England Patriot offense. Offside. 
Referee today is Jerry Austin. Bruce Armstrong, the pro bowler with Roberts, Wollaball, Cratch, and Lane, the forward wall. Bledsoe with Curtis Martin, who led the AFC in rushing last year as a rookie. Sam Gash is the blocker. Sean Jefferson, the former Charger, at one wide out. Will Moore, the other. And Ben Coates, the all-pro tight end. Penalty marked off to the 47-yard line. Offside Miami. Bledsoe throws incomplete. His receiver had fallen down. Daniel Stubbs was in the backfield with a defensive play for Miami. Will Moore, the intended receiver. Armstrong Gardner, he's the rookie from Baylor, the number one pick. Tim Bowens and Daniel Stubbs, all number one picks except for Stubbs. He was a second pick of the 49ers. Hollier, rookie Zach Thomas from Texas Tech in the middle. Chris Singleton, the backers, Buckley and Jackson are the corners. Veterans Oliver and Atkins at safety. Second down and five. Slips down at the 43-yard line, covered there by Terrell Buckley. Martin, who last year rushed for 1,487 yards. You know, Phil talked about deadly kicking off, and I'm going to just go back for a second, because Jimmy Johnson said to us, Dick, he said, we cannot afford to have anybody start at, our thir at their 35-yard line and expect to beat anybody with this young football team. That's the reason he traded Pete Stoyanovich, the popular kicker here for many years, to Kansas City. Third and short. in motion the tight end and uh, that usually means a illegal motion against the offense before the ball was snapped ball start number 83 five yards and it's still third down oh it'll be third down and six for bill parcells now in his fourth year in new england uh, you know, Phil, it's got to drive a, a coach nuts, a, even a quarterback. I mean, here you are, you got third and a little bit, and you've got a wide receiver that goes in motion. I mean, that's crazy. Three wide receivers, and Bledsoe out of the shotgun. That's been added to the New England offense this year. Good protection. He throws complete at the 38-yard line as Ben Coates, the tight end, spears it, and a first down New England. As we welcome those of you who have seen the Pittsburgh Steelers and Jacksonville and the, the Jaguars with a 24-9 win against the defending AFC champions. Here in Miami, the last play is this from the opening kickoff. The New England Patriots getting a third and six completion. Bledsoe to Ben Coates. 11 yards in the play. First down at the Miami 37. Flag down. It appeared the Dolphins offside. Slipping in the backfield is Curtis Martin as Daryl Gardner in on the play. Dick, two things that I, I saw on that play right there. One, Drew Bledsoe drawing him off sides. He's done that all preseason. Something they must have worked on. His snap count has been excellent. Offside on the defense. The nose tackle. Five yards. Repeat <laughs> first down. Is that Bowens number 95? Yes, it is. And, and, and also the other thing, watch him right here. You watch Drew Bledsoe. See him flinch right there? Tim, Tim Bowens heard the, the voice real hard, and he jumps off sides. But the other... Four plays so far, and I've seen three players slip down. The field is hard, but the top surface is wet. First and five, it was Gardner who actually leaned offside. This is Curtis Martin. He gets very little trying to slash off the left side. Zach Thomas in on the tackle. You know, Jimmy Johnson said to this team, Dick, let's have fun. I mean, all the nervousness, I mean, all, all the heat is on me. I'm the new guy here on the block, not you guys. Go out and have some fun. These guys are making an awful lot of mental mistakes. But again, when you start at the beginning about the collegiate, collegiate atmosphere, there are a lot of new faces on this football team. 23 new members of this Miami team that worked with Don Shula last year. No gain for Martin, second and five. filling the hole and this is what safeties are supposed to do number 25 is Lewis Oliver now watch on the bottom of your screen you're going to see him come into play Martin's right there but Oliver Oliver just beats everybody there's nobody there to block him and he sat, hits him for a loss actually of a yard third down call it five Oliver the veteran from Florida let's open the shotgun
Sean Hill for the score. Of the 70 to Oliver, the final 10 to Sean Hill. Those aren't boos, that's Lou for Lou. Oliver, Nittany's try for point on John Kidd's hold, and the Dolphins strike on the interception for a touchdown and lead 7 to nothing. Lewis Oliver standing back there, nobody to cover. All he does is watch Drew Bledsoe. He looks left all the way, reads it, steps in front of the receiver. Easy interception, big mistake by Drew Bledsoe. Welcome back to Miami, especially those of you who have watched the Kansas City Chiefs eke out a 2019 win over the Houston Oilers. Here, Miami has scored on a pass interception and fumble. Lewis Oliver and Sean Hill combining on a 70-yard score with the interception, picking off Drew Bledsoe. Dan Reno and the Miami offense on the field for the first time in the game. A pair of rookie hey, running backs fight? behind Marino and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the third-round pick from UCLA, Gets the call at pickup of four. Here is the offensive line for Miami. Webb, the pro bowler, and Sims also a pro bowler. Ruddy Gray and James Brown acquired free agent from the Jets. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, UCLA, Stanley Pritchett, a rookie from South Carolina. First time they've ever started a season. Two rookies in the 30 years in Miami. Second down six. Twisted down at the 33, and a fly goes down, a late hit apparently. Ricky Reynolds made the contact, and then uh, Mike Jones also in on the play, perhaps late. Mike Jones comes in late and just throws a shoulder. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 96 of the defense, 15 yards, first down. That's a good call. So, I mean, the guy is down. You see him down, and you can avoid it. That's that's why they call the play. Now, watch Jones. Here he comes in. The man is down, and now you hit him with a shoulder. He could have avoided it. That's why they threw the flag. It's an excellent call. Bill Parcell says, I don't want a dumb team, and so far here in the first quarter, we've seen a couple dumb plays. We've seen some dumbness. Some dumbness. 15 yards out to the 48-yard line. <laughs> The coaches in all sport will put up with a certain amount of physical errors, but mental errors are unforgivable. You bet. First down at the 48 for Marino, yet to throw a pass. Here he goes. And McDuffie a first down at the 39-yard line. Ty Law made the tackle, 14 yards on the play. Well, the New England defense believes their defensive backs are better cover guys. So right here is a blitz against the Miami offense. You can see Ty Law trying to cover O.J. McDuffie coming across the field. Tough assignment right there. You know, the thing about it is that Marino told us, and it's been in the newspaper, my go-to guy is going to be O.J. McDuffie. I mean, there are no secrets to who he's going to look at first. Yeah, that the relationship developed late last season. McDuffie had 11 catches in the playoffs. Explosive start that gained him more than 1,400 yards at UCLA last year. 12 on that play. What a great block by Pritchett, the rookie. Now, watch this block right in the center of the screen. There's Pritchett, comes down, makes the block, and they're off and running. I mean, that's outstanding. That's Wheeler. Mark Wheeler, number 97, was there. But Pritchett just took him out. Leading 7-0, Miami a first down at the Patriot 26-yard line. Pritchett is 232 pounds, fourth-round pick from South Carolina. <laughs> Jabbar to the 23-yard line, a chance now to introduce the men in blue on defense. The Patriots line up this way. 4-3 defense, first time in 22 years they've not been in a 3-4. Devin Wyman is the 300-pound rookie from Kentucky State. Willie McGinnis had 11 sacks last year. Sab for the injured Slade. Johnson and Brown. Brown, the former Buffalo Bill. The backers, Law and Reynolds at the corners. Terry Clay, Terry Ray, and Willie Clay. Clay had eight interceptions 
at Detroit last year, picked up as a free agent. You saw Bill Belichick, the former Cleveland Browns head coach, has rejoined Bill Parcells. Second down play for Marino. Out of the backfield. And it's Stanley Pritchett twisted down at the 20, shy of a first down. Dwayne Sab made the tackle. Well, on this first day of the NFL regular season, you look at the other scores, and the Baltimore Ravens open with a win against the Oakland Raiders. Surprise in Jacksonville. Maybe there'll be a quarterback change in Pittsburgh. Indianapolis came within a play of going to the Super Bowl. They start the new year with a win. Jarris McPhail, another rookie, he's from East Carolina, and maybe the fastest player on the Miami team, number 32, replaces Abdul Jabbar as Marino, third down and four. Gets it to McPhail, and he's denied the first down at the 17 yard line, a yard short, it would appear, as Willie McGinnis and Mike Jones make the stop. On comes the field goal unit. Well, so far, seven offensive plays. I think that's five runs, and you better believe the Miami Dolphins are going to commit to this running game. And Friday, I got a chance to watch their practice, what out of I could see. Usually on Fridays, you go out there, and it's almost all passing, trying to get it choreographed and ready. The Miami Dolphins, it was almost all running on Friday's practice. That's a big surprise. Nobody in the league does that on Friday afternoons. 35-yard attempt. Kid holding for Nedney. The new field goal kicker for Miami. And Nedney drills it. 10 nothing Dolphins. You're watching the NFL on NBC. Welcome back. 10 nothing Miami. Drew Bledsoe told us uh, yesterday, he said it was a long offseason waiting to erase the bad memories of a definite off year for him. He waits another turn. One for six today. High kick by Nedney. Taken by Megan. Megan. Seven returns for touchdowns in his career. Takes it to the 26-yard line. Here comes Drew Bledsoe. Well, Drew Bledsoe had a tough start so far today. He's going to have to rely on some of the things he learned this offseason. Footwork, learning to throw over the top of defenders, moving his feet when there's pressure around him in the pocket, and, and maybe all this training this past offseason will come and play right here because as a quarterback, you get off to a bad start. Sometimes it's... It's hard to overcome that, and, and this is going to be a tough situation for him to overcome. But Dick, yesterday, he, he looked at us with a whole lot of confidence. We talked to him last year, and he was kind of down, but he looked pretty good yesterday. That was yesterday. Hands off to Curtis Martin, misdirection, and Martin trying to get outside. Gets to the 33-yard line before Zach Thomas can make the tackle. Let's go to New York. All right, Dick, at Mile High Stadium in Denver, the Broncos get on the board first against the New York Jets. John Elway to his favorite target, Shannon Sharp, from 13 yards out. Another field goal makes it a 10-0 Denver lead over the Jets. That is in the first quarter, Dick. Wasting no time against the Jets. Thank you, Greg. six-yard line before Gardner the rookie and Thomas another rookie in that Miami defense can collaborate on the stop Zach Thomas number 54 he was picked in the fifth round this is his 23rd birthday today he said I've been playing linebacker since the third grade in White Deer Texas yeah I'll tell you the uh, the, who, we asked him who were his heroes at linebacker, and of course he said Sam Mills and Mike Singletary. <laughs> two other little I, guys. Yeah, little guys. Well, I, guys. well, he's not real little. Look at the neck on this guy. But he's only 5'11", and usually that uh, you get demerits for that height in the NFL. Well, he did. That's why he was chosen in the later rounds in the draft. But the one thing everybody said about him coming in, coming out of the college and going into the draft he makes a lot of plays but it's amazing how you get knocked down in the sleeve because you don't hit that certain height or weight I told Brad so yesterday I said if he knocks down one of your passes we're going to replay it a half a dozen <laughs> times right. first down for the Patriots on the measurement Ben Coach lined up outside and then brought in motion as they try to free him up and Bledsoe swallowed at the 30 and Zach Thomas was in on the tackle Daryl Gardner, the rookie, got a piece of him as well. Zach Thomas. Well, Zach Thomas, the one thing he has is just great instincts, knows how to get to where the ball is, and you see him working on the center, 
gets around Dave Wallabaugh, keeps hustling, and gets to the quarterback. That's the, the key to this whole thing. Watch his legs. His legs never stop moving. He's moving around Wallabaugh. He gets knocked off his feet a little bit, but he gets right back in and makes the play. Well, second down and 17. Short screen to make it, and make it to the 37 yard line where Lewis Oliver and Zach Thomas make the tackle. Let's go down to Jim Gray. Whoops. All right, Dick. Well, it's very hot down here on the field, as you pointed out, 104 degrees plus 40 percent humidity. Well, the Dolphin players have all been ordered on defense by Kevin O'Neill, their trainer and their coaching staff. You must have two glasses of water every time you come off the field. It's not an option. We don't want any dehydration. Dick. All right, Jim. It is uh, white hot in the sun. Third down seven. Bledsoe goes to the gun. Incomplete. Well covered with Sean Jefferson. A flag. A late flag is thrown. They're going to be some pass interference here. Extra defensive backs in for Jimmy Johnson and he said that ball was uncatchable. Uh, that's J I think it's J.B. Brown was the guy that they called number 37. He's not waving to a tall guy. He just <laughs> no, no, that's right. He's not talking about his hair either right here. But <laughs> I want to be 6'8". But, but you know what? It wasn't, you know, this, it should be a penalty. Drew Bledsoe threw the ball high because the receiver was being held and he just kind of threw it away. Defensive pass interference, number 37, automatic first down. J.B. Brown, who lost his cornerback starting job to Calvin Jackson. He's a sixth defensive back. Now watch him. I mean, right there is his defense. That's actually holding right there. Well, he has his hands ten on the receiver ten yards down the field, and that is a definite penalty. Remember, five yards. After five, you can't. And we welcome those of you who have watched the uh, Bengals and the St. Louis Rams. Rams winning 26-16. Dick Enberg, Paul McGuire, Bill Sims in Miami. Oh, ben Coates, who rarely drops the ball, has that one go off his chest. Incomplete. The Miami Dolphins lead here 10-0 on a striking interception touchdown early as uh, Lewis Oliver and Sean Hill combined on a 70-yard play. Dick, you're a little low. Watch this ball hits him in the head. Doink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also, That's what you call looking it in, isn't it, But Phil? watch him right here. Just at the last second, he's turning his head to look for where the defensive back is coming towards him. Almost stuck it in his ear. Yeah. That's a sin as a receiver. Dolphins got their other points and a 34-yard yard field goal by Nedney. Patriots second down and 10. Play action. Runs up. Fires to Sean Jefferson. Jefferson who played the last several years with the San Diego Chargers near a first down at the Miami 42. Well, it's a good thing to have a nice, strong arm as a quarterback. And right here, Drew Bledsoe, Sean Def Jefferson does a good job of driving the defensive back, Calvin Jackson, off and comes back and goes towards the football. Jackson getting up slowly. Second year corner from Auburn. You know, we were watching these guys warm up. So you look down and the one thing you said before this game even started, and of course during the week was how small the corners are in Miami. And when you got a guy like Sean Jefferson, I mean, you got to send these guys downfield. But but the one thing we've seen so far is how aggressive they are at attacking the football and the receiver. Jackson making the tackle on Jefferson and uh, gets twisted underneath on the play. We'll be right back. This is the NFL on NBC. Welcome back, Calvin Jackson, able to leave the field under his own power. This is Curtis Martin on first down. And Martin bumped out of bounds by J.B. Brown, who has replaced Jackson at the right corner. Zach Thomas also went on the play as they look at Calvin Jackson. Yeah, but you know he walked off the field. But watch, you could tell the pain. Watch when they see him. They just they just turned his knee a little bit and he jumped. But the good news is he did walk off the field. They're looking at it. J.B. Brown will take over. Jackson uh, caught the eye of new coach Jimmy Johnson and uh, outplayed J.B. Brown in the preseason. Second down and seven for Bledsoe and the Patriots. They trail ten to nothing. Good protection. 
hands it off to Sean Jefferson, and Sean Yadich on the play, a gain of about three and a half. Chris Singleton led the charge. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Dick, at San Diego, the Chargers have taken the lead. Stan Humphreys from two yards out find Tony Martin after a little bit of a scramble all alone in the end zone with the extra point the Chargers in the lead over the Seahawks seven nothing in the first Dick all right Greg here and hot and uh, fortunately not too humid 40 percent humidity Miami the temperature well over 100 degrees down on the field third and four well, Dolphins were offside were they drawn flags fly And the signal is against Miami. Daniel Stubbs appeared to be the man who jumped first, and that would give New England a first down. I think Stubbs, first of all, lined up offside. Then he then he got himself in that zone Offsides. he couldn't get out of. Number 96 of the defense. See, as long as he Five doesn't yards. touch anybody, first they down. will allow the play to go. You know, you'll see him on the bottom here, Stubbs. You see now he's across the line. He's gone. Stubbs is there. They also had some movement by uh, Gardner. Yeah, Derek Gardner moved. That's what made Stubbs jump, I think. He saw his teammate move, so he figures, well, I need a good jump right here to get to the quarterback. Stubbs, one of many former Miami Hurricanes who uh, linked to Jimmy Johnson's collegiate days. They're a member of the Dolphins. Letso wide open on the sidelines to Jefferson. A good move by Jefferson. And then he's hammered at the 16. Another first down for New England. 15 on the play. Did you see what Jefferson did to J.B. Brown? <laughs> I mean, he just left him, Phil. Well, that's called respect. And Sean Jefferson is a the speediest wide receivers the New England Patriots have. And right there, just a good move up the field. And this is what I like. He catches it and then turns it back up inside and gets that extra yardage. Lewis Oliver with a tackle. First down, they mark progress to the 15-yard line. Final seconds of the opening quarter. Dolphins lead 10-0. Deepest penetration by the Patriots at the Miami 15. Curtis Martin shreds a couple of tackles, gains about three before Dwight Hollier can bring him down. Just uh, eight seconds remaining in this opening quarter. And this Miami crowd uh, brought to its feet on a 70-yard interception for a touchdown. Dolphins lead 10-0. If you're a big man and you have to run down the field today, look at Ben Coach number 87 running down there. It is hot on that field, and he is trying to get air any way he can get it. And he's walked off the field a couple of times. And oh, he's that's, that's what you call sucking wind, man. I mean, this guy is, it is, is tired. It, they say 40% humidity, but I was on the field before the game, and it feels like a lot more. 10-0 Miami. We open the second quarter. Second down and six for Bledsoe and the Patriots. He, Hassan Graham tried for the one-handed catch, couldn't pull it in, and he was open. Red zone, Bill Parcell said, this is where we must improve. Plenty of opportunities last year. They had 62 possessions inside the 20, came away with only 24 touchdowns, but plenty of improvement, Phil, in the preseason. Well, uh, really, I think to be a great red zone team, you must be able to get inside the 20, throw it in the end zone, or run it in there. Good running teams are always good in the red zone. Third down and six. Shotgun Bledsoe. Underneath the coach. He has the catch at the five. It's going to be very close. No, he's going to be about a half a yard short. And you you are 10 nothing. Now you know Parcells. What are you going to do? You, I, you know, you're oh, in his position right now. He's going for it. There's no doubt. I mean, you don't you just don't get these many situations where you got a chance to get seven points. You have to go for it. See, now, I, I would even call it whether, I mean, you could call for a measurement. Just make to give measure these guys, yeah, make, give these guys a break. There was another good example. Ben Coates. Paul, he's running across that field. He looks like you. That's how slow he's running. Say that again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Gives us a feeling, doesn't it? We'll be right back. NBC is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call now to enjoy a hot and delicious Domino's Pizza by halftime. For hot wow, call Domino's now. Very light breeze from the west, and that isn't helping uh, 
the comfort level. The uh, heat index is well over 100. Uh, testimony is Ben Coates. They brought in the heavy equipment now to try to cool the big guy down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he a big bag of ice on him. He's been out there a lot. The <clears throat> offense for New England, 13 and a half minutes. And uh, Dan Marino and Miami, although they lead 10-3, not much of a chance. Jarris McPhail decides to take it out and gets it back just to the 20-yard line. In three weeks on NBC, Saturday nights, they're going to get a whole new look and feel. Dark skies is coming. And we've all heard the reports about life on Mars. Well, could it be that alien life has been on Earth for a long time? The battle is about to begin. Dark skies coming to NBC Saturday in three weeks. We have been here for a long time. I know. You, you should get some guest shots on that show, Paul. <laughs> I really should. 10-3 Miami, the difference, the interception, and fumble return for touchdown by the Dolphins 70 yards early. Marino sends McDuffie in motion. Gives off to Abdul-Jabbar. A gain of two. It's 10-3 here in South Florida. Let's check elsewhere. Greg Gumbel. All right, Dick, in Denver, John Elway supplying his own highlight reel for the season already. 191st career game. He ties a franchise record. This is his second touchdown pass of the day. A bullet to Ed McCaffrey, 39 yards. The Broncos lead the Jets 14 to nothing. That's the second quarter score, Dick. All right, and Phil Sims, he still can wing it, can he? He is still the best at moving in that pocket and throwing it downfield. Second down and eight for the Dolphins at their 22. Marino, that quick trigger to Byers. Byers now playing tight end in the Jimmy Johnson offense. First down and 129 consecutive games with a reception for Keith Byers. And the streak is still alive. Well, Keith Byers moved to tight end, and, and really that shouldn't be a problem for him because he was known as a receiver out of the backfield, and Jimmy Johnson doesn't expect his tight ends to be great run blockers. So Byers now 129 straight games, fifth best all time. Art Monk, the uh, career record holder. And Steve Largent, Jerry Rice. 16 yards on the play. Uh, You know, the one thing about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, now when I saw Jimmy Johnson in Chicago three weeks ago, he said, I don't know what this guy's going to do. He right, makes a great run and he gets hurt. He goes and sits on the sideline. Even Marino, Dick looked at us yesterday and said, you know, look at this guy. We don't know exactly what he can do, but he is a great runner. Here's an example of why Jimmy Johnson loves this guy, because he is a player. He's averaged six yards a carry today, 34 yards on six attempts. First down at midfield. We were also told by the Jimmy Johnson yesterday, they're going to run on that left side. They're going to te test Willie McGinnis against Richmond Webb. There's such a big weight difference right there. And, of course, his other all-pro lineman, Keith Sims, and they're having success on that left side of the offensive line. Well, Jimmy said to us, he said, look, if we can't run against a 255-pound defensive end and a rookie tackle, then there's something wrong with our football team. And look at the difference in the weights, 255 to 303. I don't care how strong you are, 255. Hey, wait. It's tough to move around. Second and short, and Jabbar trips as he gets to the line of scrimmage. He'll be just shy of a first down. It would be up here, just outside the 40. You know, Jimmy has really been kind to us because, you know, Friday he, no, he doesn't allow anyone in, Dick, to training camp and take a practice session. They let Phil in. Boy, he gave you a great look, didn't oh, he? Oh, it was wonderful. He was talking to us before practice, and they take off and they have practice. They go to the far left corner of the whole complex. They go the other way. They got people lined up behind them. And Jimmy comes running off the field after practice. He goes, hey, didn't you like that practice, Phil? <laughs> yeah, sure. Was, I saw a lot. I saw the rear ends of a lot of big players. Jabbar carrying four of the five times in this series. Now third and short, and Marino running out of time will spend his first time out. Eight minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the first half. Miami by seven. Watch this, folks. And I don't know, this, did he see something? He couldn't hear them. We know that part. But did he see something? Look at his oh, eyes. Oh, yeah. I think they had a pass play call, and he knew he had it. And the, and the clock ran down on me, so he had to call a timeout. Well, he was salivating. He thought, 
<laughs> he had something big sitting there, but no time in which to uh, execute. So it's third and about a half yard. <laughs> Jabbar met rudely for a loss. Lost about a half yard. Good defensive surge by the Patriots, and it was led by number 97. Mark Wheeler, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, came over to Bill Parcells, uh, unrestricted free agent. This surprises me because Jimmy Johnson told us we're going to go to Webb's side. We're going to go left to Webb's and Sims because of the guys they have over there, and they tried to go right. But that was a check play. Dan Marino came up to the line of scrimmage, and what defense they were in determined where he was going to run the football. So they go for it on fourth and two. I'm surprised here, too. Marino couldn't quite beat the clock. Wow. Now it'll be fourth and seven, and the punter team the snap, comes on. The lay of game on the offense, five yards. It's still fourth down. They were going for it. He was he was going to throw the quick hitch out here to Scott Miller, and Scott Miller was open. And anytime that clock runs down, where it's a delay of game, it's always the fault of the quarterbacks. He has to, he's responsible for watching it and controlling the football game. I'll tell you what he was looking at. Pritchett went out and no one went out to cover him. Dave Beckett back as John Kidd will punt for the first time. Delivers from his own 42. A wobbler. Shag it for a catch at the 13 yard line. And that gives us a chance to update the action in the NFL. We go to New York. All right, Dick, earlier in the day, defending AFC champion Pittsburgh lost to Jacksonville 24-9. The news on five-time Pro Bowl linebacker Greg Lloyd is not good. He suffered a torn patella tendon in his left knee. He is out for the year. Devastating news for the Steelers, who lost Rod Woodson for virtually the entire year last season when he suffered a knee injury on opening day. Let's go back to Dick Enberg, Phil Simms, Paul McGuire in Miami. All right, Greg, and one of the premier defensive players in oh. the entire league out for the year. Dick, he's half of their defense. I mean, he's half of it. This guy does everything. Well, he does. He just sits the emotional edge that that team has. It's all set by Greg Lloyd. And they lost Kevin Green to free agency. Giving Curtis Martin some relief out to the 15-yard line again. Of a yard and a half. It'll be second down and a short nine. Trace Armstrong, Daryl Gardner, and Dwight Hollier on the tackle. Well, because of the heat, Bill Parcells did tell us yesterday that he was going to have to put Dave Megan in here and give him a few series so Curtis Martin can keep his legs fresh. Sean Jefferson to the left, Will Moore to the right, second down and long, 10 to 3, Miami leads it. Bledsoe to the sidelines to Jefferson, who spins away from Jamie Brown. Fumbles the ball, and Miami recovers. It's Lewis Oliver again. You see Sean Jefferson to the outside, catching it, trying to turn it back inside. He's done it earlier in the game. He's going down. He just fumbles the ball. Phil. He he it wasn't knocked out. He, he drops it. He doesn't have the tip of the ball on his fingers, Paul. And that's what they teach you right away. Take that ball, secure your fingertips over one end, stick the other end up into your body. Look how he's carrying it, like a loaf of bread. And that's, oh, and J.B. Brown does hit it with his hand. That's what knocks it out. Boy, I'll tell you what, you just try to do something more than you're, than you're capable of doing. Big break, Dolphins. They lead 10-3, take over at the 25. Caught in the backfield is Abdul Jabbar. A big loss. Mark Wheeler, 97, and Willie McGinnis make the play. You know what tells me when you have a pretty good team? You're going to see Mark Wheeler make a play here. But when, when, when the offense gives the ball up and the defense gets back and they get fired up, look at Wheeler. He just goes through and makes the play in the backfield. He went right through Tim Ruddy, never had a chance. Well, Tim Ruddy didn't have a chance right there. That's just a bad blocking assignment. He's to the right, and you're asking Tim Ruddy to get around and stop him when the play is going to the right. Too tough of a job. A loss of seven. Second and 17 for Marino with Byers, the tight end, in motion. Marino skips away from trouble and throws. Was it intercepted or trapped? They're calling it an interception. This is Terry Ray. And Ray, who played in Oklahoma, goes all the way to the Miami 47-yard line. I 
you just said. It tells you a good football team when a defense responds after the offense gives up. You're down by seven, and yet they come back defensively. That's the difference in this. Hope, hopefully the difference Bill Parcells thinks in this team this year. Defense has some personality. Terry Ray, excellent job of reading a quarterback size. Breaks on the ball as Dan Marino's throwing it, and then does an excellent job of getting up and getting yards after the interception. Did you see what he did, though, Dick? He got his knees under the ball so the ball wouldn't hit the ground. And when you're a quarterback and you throw an interception in this league, you better pay attention because those <laughs> defensive linemen search out the quarterback. 43-yard return by Ray. Trailing 10-3. Bledsoe goes to work. It's Jefferson. Same pattern. Brown can't tackle him, but others are. Oh, he fumbles again. Recovered by Oliver. No, it's Tim Bowens. <laughs> 95. Oh, that is. I'm telling you. That Tim is unexcusable, really to take a catch like that and keep breaking across the field. And Coach Parcells can't believe it either. You know the worst part about it? He has the first down if he turns to his right. But no, he comes back inside again. You already fumbled once, and now that was Edmund just yeah. nailed him and oh. knocked the ball out. When you go back inside, you've got to expect pursuit from the defense. You're running into all the bodies. Sean Jefferson, two plays, coughs it up twice. Well, Reno, look at this. He was on the phone talking, yeah. <laughs> talking upstairs. He got the ball back. Oh. i tell you what, as a quarterback, you really never lose sight of what's happening on the field. You're watching every play, hoping for something good. <laughs> well, Miami leading 10-3 gets the ball back at their 39-yard line. Well, Jamar breaks one tackle and fights his way to the 47-yard line. A gain of eight. Dick, this is, that was Devin Wyman. I mean, he's in the backfield, should make the tackle. Number 72. I mean, he is there to make the play, but watch Abdul-Jabbar, the, the, the strength of him. Wyman 72 is there. He's got his arms around him. Abdul-Jabbar just throws him away and goes up in the hole, picks up nine yards. Jimmy Johnson says Abdul-Jabbar, he can find that crease better than any running back we have. And as Nate Newton once told us, he knows how to run to daylight. Second and one. Terry Ray made the stop. And that was a crease right there. He had a little hole right there, and he hits it full speed ahead. Gets the only spot in that offensive line where he has a chance to get positive yards. Watch right there. Little hole squeezes right through it full speed. Excellent job of running. Yeah, a little hole, but how about Pritchett? Pritchett I mean, yes, Pritchett I know, is blocking. Right. This young man can block. Changed his name from Sherman Shah a year ago. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar gets a breather. 52 yards for him. Birdie Harmony, the back. Ball slipped, and he shoots up the middle. Another first down. Jimmy Johnson proclaimed early, we're going to run the ball. Do you believe him now? <laughs> I mean, it's hard to believe we're watching the Miami Dolphins because this is an excellent job of staying with the run, keeping after the defenders, and the running backs are doing an excellent job of running to the hose full speed and getting positive yards. But see, the knock on this offensive line at the beginning of the year is how are you going to run when you've got Marino back there and all you've ever really done is pass block? Well, they're proving today that they can also run block. Harley again after 17 on the last carry. He's knocked down after a two-yard gain as he reaches the 25. Uh, Paul, you could can... Can you see him? Pritchett just, I mean, he nails Wheeler. Mark Wheeler, number 97. It, it, it's, it's a, it's really is an easy block, but he comes down the line of scrimmage. We're talking about this young guy. The reason, one of the reasons, watch 36 here, folks. Look at this block. Boom. You're out of there. And what you're going to see, New England's going to have to get a safety involved up there. And Dan Marino and Jimmy Johnson said once they got to get up there to help against that running game, we're going to go big outside. Out rushing New England almost three to one. Second and eight. And the catch by Scott Miller, who has started his first game with the Dolphins, now in his sixth year here in Miami. Scott Miller, the sure-handed sure receiver for the Miami Dolphins. Ty Law, the defensive back, does an excellent job of reading the quick step. Step by Dan Marino makes the break, but Dan Marino doesn't let the ball hang in the air too long. Now, no wonder. You know what? See how heavy he looks here? 
That's what television does to me. Yeah, that's right. Oh. First down for the Dolphins, leading 10 to 3. The toss to Parmalee. Breaks one tackle. Missed tackle by McGinnis, who had it. As we approach the two minute warning here in South Florida, the Miami Dolphins leading the New England Patriots by seven and looking for more. On the NFL on NBC, the Wild West rivalry is renewed. Steve Bono and the Kansas City Chiefs host Tim Brown on the Oakland Raiders. John Elway and the Broncos battle Rick Meyer and the Seahawks. The Ravens take on the Steelers or regional action next Sunday at 12 noon Eastern on the NFL on NBC. With Paul McGuire and Phil Sims to Kenberg, welcome back to Miami, where Jimmy Johnson's Dolphins have been very impressive in this first half. The score is 10-3. Miami has the ball at the 12-yard line of New England, where it's second down and six. And Dick, I believe, and Paul, we talk about it all the time. Running is an attitude. Jimmy has brought that attitude to the Dolphins, and it's. I'm surprised they're having this much success, but they're going to continue to run this ball hard all year long. The running back, but Marino fades the throw underneath and incomplete, almost picked off. Stanley Pritchett, the fullback, was the intended receiver, and Ted Johnson, Patriots middle linebacker, had a hand on it. You know, Dick, we talk so much about the running game and how both of these guys would like to run, but this is the reflection of this is, is going to be later on in the season. This is when they're really going to need it. When they play in cold weather areas in the rain, when you have to run the football, the Miami Dolphins have not been able to do that, and that's what he wants to establish. Call that, and it preserves your defense. That's the biggest thing, and it teaches your team. You practice a run, you become tougher because of that. Dolphins go to four wide out with Jarris McPhail with Marino. McDuffie is the man he likes to go to. He looks for McDuffie, but he can't get it off. And he throws it. Finds McDuffie in a first down at the five. What an effort by Dan Marino. You think he isn't tough? I'm telling you what. These guys are draped all over him, and he knows where everyone is on the field. He was going to go to McDuffie anyway. That was the first guy he was going to throw to was O.J. McDuffie. Now watch him. He gets caught up inside, but watch Marino. He steps up. He can't get it to him. He brings it down, and then he just flicks it. Whoops. Whoops. You're not allowed to do that. Well, that, that was accidental, right? But that's an excellent job of Dan Marino. Just throw from any angle, just flicks it with his wrist. The first and goal at the five. Jabbar sticks his nose off tackle and picks up a couple of yards. Well, we've talked about it through the years. Marino now in his 14th season with the quickest release. Once he decides to go with a pass, can deliver faster than anyone perhaps in the history of the game. And that time from the most awkward of positions. I think really numbers. Willie Clay said it best yesterday. You really have to play receivers and not the ball because he throws it so quick and hard. You just can't you can't react to it. Second and goal at the three. touchdown chance and the young man from UCLA has his first professional score. Joe Nedney, the try for point. Good job by Kidd and respotting the ball and Miami takes a 17 to 3 lead. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar great blocking up front. 61 yards and 10 plays for Miami. You're watching the NFL on NBC. This guy says he's looking for Dan Marino. I wasn't aware of any visitors for Dan. Sorry, Dan's busy. Going somewhere. And you are. Oops, so sorry. Didn't I tell you this is private property? Marino going deep, has him at open. Hey, maybe we can give Dan a message for you. Make this good block on Ted Johnson. Opens the hole to the end zone for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 
Jabbar with 57 yards rushing in this opening half. What a debut for him. And a 17-3 lead. Only 35 seconds remain in this first half. Stay with us at halftime. All the scores and highlights from New York of this opening day's action. And the Patriots, uh, a couple of critical fumbles by Sean Jefferson denying potential drives. Well, they, you know, Sean Jefferson, when he was with San Diego, he used to catch the ball and just drop it. Now, with New England, he catches it, then runs with it a little bit, and then drops it. So, you know, he's holding on to it a little bit longer. <laughs> One of the reasons uh, well, why uh, he right. was uh, waived by San Diego. Dropped too many passes out there. At least that's what they thought with the organization. And he's catching the ball. You're right, Paul. But showing he's not doing a good job of tucking it away once he catches it and tries to make those runs. So Troy Brown and Dave Meggett are at the goal line for New England with just seconds remaining in this opening half. Nedney kicks it off. Meggett at the two. Fights to get just to the 15 yard line. OJ Briggins made the tackle. The tradition of Notre Dame football returns to NBC's sports, and that'll be in just two weeks. Star quarterback Ron Paulus and the Fighting Irish welcome the Boilermakers of Purdue on campus. Notre Dame football on NBC in two weeks. The Fighting Irish and the Boilermakers. Miami Dolphins will get the ball in the second half. They better figure out a way to slow down this running game. I mean, is that unusual to say? No, it's <laughs> Miami. Yeah. Well, Bledsoe just going to take a knee, and uh, with less than 30 seconds remaining, both teams eager to get into the air-conditioned locker rooms at the intermission. Jimmy Johnson has opened uh, his era in Miami, and uh, well, at the end of the first act, the fans here uh, give him a standing ovation. It all began with a 70-yard touchdown play early in the game. Lewis Oliver intercepting, fumbled. Sean Hill finished the 70 yards, the final 10. We'll be sending you to our NFL NBC studios right after these words from your local station. Here in Miami, three New England turnovers, two by wide receiver Sean Jefferson, combining with a new-look running game, has given the Dolphins an impressive 17-3 lead at halftime. Now to Greg Gumbel in New York. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report, brought to you by Domino's Pizza. For hot and wow, call Domino's. Now. All right, thank you, Dick. Welcome, everyone. Greg Gumbel, along with Joe Gibbs, Mike Ditka, Chris Collinsworth, as we run down scores and highlights of the action today. The game that you are watching, the Miami Dolphins leading the New England Patriots at halftime by a score of 17-3. to This Dolphin team looking any different to you? Oh, there are a lot of defensive coordinators around the league right now going, uh-oh. Dan Marino with a running game. Last year, the Dolphins ran the ball only 41% of the time. So far in this game, 17 runs. Dan Marino only seven passes. He used to get that in the first drive of ball games. This is a scary situation for the rest of the league. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 14 of those carries for 56 yards. In Denver, it's a Broncos romp thus far, 28 to nothing as they approach halftime at Mile High Stadium. Two touchdown passes, John Elway, one to Sharp, one to McCaffrey. What's going on there, Mike? Well, you know, I, I really like Denver a lot. I told you the two teams I like the most are Denver and Miami, and so far that's holding up. Denver is solid all the way through, and the thing, they look like they found a pass right. Oh, Donald wishes he was back in Pittsburgh, believe me. <laughs> you bet. All right, in San Diego, the Chargers and the Seahawks, as they approach halftime, the Chargers lead it by a field goal, 10-7, to 7, the score there. In San Francisco, the 49ers all over the Saints, 24 to nothing. Vardell and Rice have scored touchdown runs for the Niners. In Tampa, the Bucks and the Green Bay Packers, Packers. The Packers lead it 24 to 3. The Brett Favre to Keith Jackson connection has clicked three times today. The last time for 51 yard touchdown, 24 3 Green Bay. Earlier today, Baltimore, the Ravens, their home opener, they beat the Oakland Raiders 19 to 14. That's former Colts great Johnny Unitas. Reading Ravens coach Ted Marchabrota before the game. Ravens quarterback Vinny Testaverde can't find an open receiver, so he takes off on his own. Nine-yard touchdown run. Baltimore led 7-0. Billy Joe Hobart playing for the injured Jeff Hostetler, connected with Tim Brown on a pair of scoring passes. The nine-yarder gives the Raiders a 14-7 lead at halftime. 
Ernest Biner put Baltimore ahead to stay with a one-yard touchdown run. The two-point conversion failed, but the Ravens held on to win 19-14 as the fans celebrate the first win in team history. In Jacksonville, the Jaguars beat up on the Pittsburgh Steelers today. 24-9 was the final score. Steeler linebacker Greg Lloyd carted off the field with a season-ending injury to his left knee. Torn patella tendon. Meanwhile, Jaguars quarterback Mark Brunel threw two touchdown passes. This 15-yarder to Keenan McCardle just before halftime put the Jaguars up 14-6. The Steelers rotated all three of their quarterbacks without success. Mike Tomczak picked off by number one draft pick Kevin Hardy here. The Jaguars outplay the Steelers and win by a final of 24-9. The Greg Lloyd saga is only part of what was just an overall bad day for the Steelers, Joe. An absolute nightmare for Bill Cowher. Think about this. In the offseason, they decided to let O'Donnell go, and now it looks like they have a totally confused quarterback picture. Then they, they decide to let Kevin Green go, one of their pass rushers. Today, Lloyd gets hurt. Now you've lost your pass rushers. I can't picture a worse day for Bill Cowher. Pittsburgh Steelers look like after one game that they could be in trouble. Jaguars only had 17 sacks all last year. They registered four today, three by Jeff Lagerman. In Indianapolis, the Colts beat Arizona 20 to 13. New Arizona head coach Vince Tobin, the Colts defensive coordinator, passed two years against his old team. This is a scary moment for the Colts. Jim Harbaugh's passing arm hit hard by defensive tackle Eric Swan. Harbaugh left with a bruised right arm but returned in the second half. And in the fourth quarter, he looks for and finds rookie receiver Marvin Harrison, 35 years yards and a touchdown. Harrison's first NFL TD. Harbaugh's second of the game. It was 20 to 6 at that point. The Colts win it 20 to 13. In Houston, nip and tuck game taken by the Kansas City Chiefs today. 20 to 19 was the final score. In Washington, the Eagles outlasted the Redskins 17 to 14. That is eight straight wins for the Eagles over the Redskins. Eagles coach Ray Rhodes hoping to avoid the slow start that hurt his club last year. Rodney Pete, touchdown pass, put Philly in front, but Terry Allen takes it in from the two to tie the game at seven. Allen had 110 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Pete broke the tie by finding Chris T. Jones with a nine-yard touchdown pass here, 14-7 Philly. Pete finished with 267 yards passing and two touchdowns. The Eagles, 17-14. St. Louis at home beat the Cincinnati Bengals today, 26-16. Lawrence Phillips scored two touchdowns. Minnesota at home beat the Detroit Lions, 17-13. The uh, winning play, a Brad Johnson touchdown pass to uh, Chris Carter and in Carolina the Panthers over the Atlanta Falcons by a score of 29 to 6. We will send you back to Miami for the second half right after these words from your local station. Hey Jimmy, where have you been? Jimmy, the NBC Peacock is here to help you with your big move. You know what happens when you're late. Give me 20. Jimmy Johnson's made the move to the AFC. And he is Welcome back to uh, sizzling hot South Florida, the second hottest day for a game in the history of the Dolphins' 30 years, and the heat put on by the running game, and Marino celebrating with Abdul Jabbar and Jimmy Johnson leading the applause. This is exactly what he wanted this year, a team that could run the ball, and Abdul Jabbar outrushing the man who led the AFC a season ago, 57 yards to 24 in the first half. Well, Jimmy Johnson told me in Chicago three weeks ago before the game, we're going to run the ball on first down, we're going to run the ball on second down, we're going to run the ball on Did third down. Did you believe down. him then? No. I did. Because <laughs> the first time it went on, the first play they threw was a, uh, they ran was a pass play, and so was the second play. So I thought he lied to me then, but he isn't lying now. I believed him the whole time because I know the reason why he had success in Dallas. He believes that's the way you build a football team. Tough defense, you have to run the football because it really sets the tone for your football team. Attitude, it makes Makes you tough because every day you got to practice against the run. You practice trying to be a run, better running team, and they showed it here in the first half. Let's look at the halftime statistics now. 
That will reflect the uh, rushing strength of Miami and building a 17-3 lead. The Coors Light halftime statistics and passing yards. Marino throwing only seven times, completing five for 48 yards. And, of course, three big turnovers forced by the Miami defense. Two fumbles by Sean Jefferson and an interception of Bledsoe that went for an early 70-yard touchdown. Lewis Oliver picked it off, fumbled at the 10. Sean Hill scooped it up on the one hop and took it in for the score. That started the game. And Oliver also a fumble recovery, a big uh, first half for him. New England to kick it off. Vinatieri. 17-3 Dolphins. McPhail, the speedy rookie, is the deep man. Fumbles the ball, picked up by Oliver, doesn't pick it up, and finally has to fall on it at the three-yard line. A least save, total disaster, as Miami begins inside its five-yard line. Sun was right in McPhail's eyes. He couldn't right. see the ball. He just lost it. You see it so many times in baseball, you rarely see it in football. Look at it. He just totally lost the football. There's Lewis Oliver with his third fumble of the day. Larry Wiggum was right there for the New England Patriots. They you know, spotted at the four. Before we get started, let me let Dick and I, uh, uh, or Phil and I say one thing to you. Congratulations. 30 years doing NFL football. Dick Enberg goes back to 1966 wow. to Los Angeles. 30 yeah. years. That has a nice ring to it. Yes, yes it yes. does. George Allen's first year as coach of the Rams. Congratulations, Thank my you. friend. It's great to be here. 17-3. And uh, Marino from deep in his own end. And he comes out throwing. A little flat pass to pitch it as fullback, and it gains very little as it was covered well by Dwayne Sav, the linebacker. Jim Gray. All right, Dick, I spoke to both coaches. First, Jimmy Johnson, very pleased with his defense, very pleased that they were able to create so many turnovers. Loves the way they're running the football, look for much more in, in the second half. Now, as for Bill Parcells, he was very calm. He says, we're beating ourselves. They're not doing much to us. We're just beating ourselves. He told his team very calmly at halftime, we're better than this. Let's act like it. Dick? All right, Jim. Second down and uh, a short 10. Gain of about a foot on that pass by Marino. And Marino to throw again. Wide open. It's Pritchett, the fullback. And he has a first down in New England territory. Willie Clay saved the touchdown. This play was set up because the Dolphins ran the football so well in the first half. New England has changed its defensive secondary. They had two deep all in the first half. Now they only have one deep, so that gives the seams and the outside open for Dan Marino. And look at that seam up top. When you run the football successfully in the NFL, that's what it does. Creates opportunities. Dan Marino took advantage of it. Pritchett, the rookie fullback from South Carolina, 52 yards on the play. First down at the 44 of the Patriots. line again of four so this is interesting Jimmy Johnson establishes the run rather vigorously in fact and the first half comes out and it's all passing what did he tell us uh, uh, yesterday he told us we have to run the ball well because I want him to get out of that certain coverage where I can throw it New England came out in the second half they're out of it he sees it let's throw the football second down and six for Marino sends Scott Miller right OJ McDuffie left the tight end Keith Byers on the left side Abdul Jabbar the running back and Marino throwing again again in the flat to Abdul Jabbar makes a good juggling catch for maybe a yard get well actually a loss of a couple of yards when well, New England Sab covered it I'm sorry Dick but New England learned its lesson it went back to putting those safeties deep and protect against those big passing plays well, let's play out here to Jabbar. I mean, I don't know if he's going to pick up much anyway, but he's gotten a little bit more than this. He juggled the ball. When you do that, the defense now has time. Sab gets there, and they make the play. You know, that, that Pritchett play, they had Sab playing Pritchett for about 12 yards, and after that, there was nobody there. Well, there's no responsibility right here. That's the problem with that defensive coverage. Who has the people when they go deep in the seams? Third down and eight for Marino. Four wide. Jarris McPhail, the fifth round pick 
from East Carolina. Corwin Brown and Larry Wiggum with a tackle. All McPhail did was juke Collins. Well, that's what Dan Marino wanted to do. Jarris McPhail against Todd Collins. You're going to see him go right down the middle. There's only one person that can cover him. Todd Collins, the linebacker. Dan Marino sees that. The safeties are out of there. A big hole for Dan Marino to throw to. So the rookies, and that's a dominant factor for the running backs here in Miami. McPhail, Abdul Jabbar, Pritchett contributing well. Not this time. Abdul Jabbar smothered no gain. Kareem Abdul Jabbar picked in the third round. McPhail and everyone raving about what a great fifth round selection he is. He, he <laughs> beat them all in uh, the training camp. And then Stanley Pritchett, the blocker, he's the Daryl Johnston, if you will, in Dallas. The fullback will block him. He can also catch as Johnston uh, does. And he showed you he's got some speed. What a draft to pick up those three running backs. And already you're seeing the effect they're playing so well first game of the season. Second and nine, Marino play action. Dumps it to Pritchett. And he makes it to the 16-yard line where it'll be third and five. Monty Brown made the tackle. You know, the interesting thing off. about the draft choices of Miami, I, I, when, I, when I first saw this, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to believe, but seven out of the 12 make it. But they had three picks in the fifth round, and all three guys make the football team. Well, it's Jimmy Johnson's track record has been he just knows the talent of players. He does a good job of evaluating the college talent. And in Dallas, he had a lot of late round draft picks become very successful. And looks like he might do the same thing here with the Dolphins. There's Daryl Gardner. He was their number one pick, the 20th selected overall. Third down and five. Marino ducks the pressure. Throws the pressure. Fumbles into the end zone. Recovered by. anyway. And Pritchett comes out, watch him. He falls down. Then he gets back up. Marino just stays with him. Sam is there and then makes the throw. You talk about hustle as a rookie. Now he gets hit. He fouled in the end zone. They get the ball back. It's touchdown. But he falls down. Marino stays with him and waits till he gets back up and then hits him. Unbelievable. That needs drive the point. And the Dolphins now lead 24 to 3. Scott Miller gets the score. Stanley Pritchett in his eyes is the only receiver on this play. Stanley Pritchett comes out. Watch him at the bottom of your screen. He's going to slip and fall. Dan Marino buys time by moving in the pocket. Pritchett gets out, back up, hustles, gets down the one-yard line, fumbles. The Dolphins are hustling. They recover the fumbles. 96-yard drive, and Marino threw only seven passes the first half. A perfect seven for seven on the opening drive of the second half. Ted Johnson, give him credit. He made a big hit to force the fumble, but it popped right into the arms of Scott Miller for the Miami score. Medney, his kick is short to Megan at the eight. Hey, Megan has a crease. 30, 40, Medney trying to slow him down. Misses, and Megan finally knocks out of bounds at the Miami 38-yard line. Another fine return by the veteran Dave Megan. The Patriots need something. Provide some spark for New England. A kickoff return all the way to the Miami 38-yard line. Ben Coates has caught just two balls. Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots uh, pretty much need a score in this possession. And he goes on top to Jefferson. It was out of bounds anyway. A reminder, third rock from the sun has started its three-week countdown to the season premiere. Yeah, but look at who's on beyond there, though. The NBA superstar Dennis Rodman. You've got to watch that. I mean, he joins the aliens because he is an alien, isn't he? Yeah, and he's going against uh, out of this world battle against, against evil Dick. Yeah, the, the truth. truth. Whoa. Yeah, the truth be known. It's the one hour season premiere, third <laughs> rock from the sun, three weeks from tonight here on NBC. Yeah, not a big stretch for Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Of 
of the Dolphins gets a sack. Well, Drew Bledsoe is looking down the middle of the field, and one thing about Jimmy Johnson defenses, on first and second down, look at the receivers down the field. You will see nobody open. Drew Bledsoe is looking down the middle. Stop it right there. Look at this. Right here, they're right on it. There's Ben Coates in the middle field. Nobody is open. You must throw the ball outside the hashes on first and second down against this defense. Loss of seven, third and 17. The protection. And he drills it to Will Moore. Moore's first catch of the day right at the sticks. It'll be close to a first down. J.B. Brown, the tackler, along with Zach Thomas, who drifted back from middle linebacker. And they, well, if they don't make it, I guarantee you this is four-down situation because uh, you're down by a lot of 21 points, and you better put some points on the board. Well, come on, one eye. Is he, did he make it or not? Well, I can't see the ball. you got to let me see the ball first oh, of all. He no, he didn't make it. He sure is. He's almost a yard short. What you, did he make it? Give me a hard one. <laughs> All right, here it comes. Fourth, <laughs> yeah, fourth down and less than a yard for New England. Exhaustion or not, Big Ben Coates shows you why he is the most feared tight end in the AFC. Yeah, a little play action here, though. Well, and the Miami safeties just get completely fooled right there. They came up expecting the run. Lewis Oliver, we saw him earlier attack the line of scrimmage in a running situation. Here he played run all the way. Nobody back to cover Ben Coates. Adam Benatari with a try for point. And the rookie from South Dakota State knocks it through and with 747 remaining in the third quarter the Patriots on a 29 yard touchdown let's to Coates cut the Miami lead. Now the Patriots get a score when they needed one desperately set up by Dave Meggett's 54 yard kickoff return. And now that Terry sends a long high kick with to Terrence McFadden. Failed twice, having trouble fielding the kickoff. Let's go back to the touchdown. Watch Lewis Oliver, the strong safety on the play action fake. He's just too aggressive coming up to the line of scrimmage, trying to stop the run. And Ben Coates walks right by him, and Drew Bledsoe does an excellent job of throwing it out there nice and soft where Ben Coates can catch it and score the touchdown. Okay, that's great hustle by Coates, though, to get in the end zone. But McPhail, Dick, I mean, you're, you're looking at a, a really some rookie mistakes now. Once he, the one time he did lose the ball in the sun, that time he tried to run before he got the ball. You've got to wait till you get it. He won't be back there next week. Marino, seven for seven on the last drive that started inside the five. Begins at the five this time. And it's Abdul Jabbar, a loss of a yard. Devin Wyman, the rookie from Kentucky State, what an impressive physical specimen he is six seven and three oh seven played only one year at Kentucky State how'd he get there Dick <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's from East Palo Alto California and his mother said after junior college I got an airplane ride for you to Kentucky State <laughs> he said it was a one-way ticket oh, one -way. <laughs> his mother bought it that, uh, great? that is great they feel they made a steal here he is a sixth round selection by the Patriots hit by Guinness says Abdul Jabbar gets it out to the six yard line where it'll be third down and nine. They're using those misters to try to cool off the Patriots. And if you're just joining us, the temperature well over 100 degrees. It is a, just a blistering hot late afternoon in South Florida. And it does look like the New England Patriots have caught their second win. They've gotten a little used to the heat. They got some fluids in them at halftime. And they, they look like they have a little more energy here in the second half. Well, they'd like to stop Marino and get the ball in good field position as Marino goes to the shotgun, third and nine. Three wide receivers. And the rookie Wyman makes the mistake. And O.J. McDuffie, a first down at the 29. 
actually, Wyman makes two mistakes. He makes two mistakes. The first one is when he goes offside. The second one, he didn't continue. Offside, number 72 of the defense. Penalty is a fly. All right, watch First Devin. Down. Well, watch Devin out. Now he's offside. Now watch what he does. He really doesn't put any pressure on him. Simpson's got him. He's right there at the line of scrimmage. He doesn't get his hands up. And look at O.J. McDuffie going across the middle. Two safeties back there, but it doesn't matter. Dan Marino, best pass of the day from him right there. McDuffie, who caught 62 last year. And that year, he could uh, catch 80 or 90 this season. Bernie Parmalee, the veteran, out to the 33-yard line, a gain of five on first down. Parmalee with knee surgery in the offseason after a solid year rushing the ball. He gained 878 yards a year ago. Parmalee, his first two seasons, barely used. He was a special teamer. And then the last two years, uh, almost matching seasons, just under 900 yards. He's 196 pounds, a 28-year-old from Ball State. Marino spends a timeout. And Miami with five minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Dolphins with a two-touchdown lead. On NBC, the Wild West rivalry is renewed. Steve Bono and the Kansas City Chiefs host Tim Brown and the Oakland Raiders. John Elway and the Broncos battle Rick Meyer and the Seahawks. The Ravens take on the Steelers or regional action next Sunday at 12 noon Eastern on the NFL on NBC. We're back in Miami. We're talking about the running game and the variety of young backs. That's Irving Spikes, who was penciled in as the starter, but has a hamstring late this week and uh, obviously not in uniform. He's another part of the uh, new run offense. Look, uh, Jimmy Johnson, the catch by tight end Keith Byers for little or no gain as Terry Ray all over Byers. Don't you like what Jimmy Johnson said, though, about Spikes? He said he had a twinge. I mean, he could possibly have played. But he said, if he can't give us 100%, we can't use him. I mean, I really like the attitude. I mean, he wants healthy people. Well, a running back that has a little problem with his leg is useless because, you know, their legs are everything, of course. And there's no use with all the good young running backs he has here. You're right, Paul. If you're not 100%, don't even suit up. But I bet you he gets well early. <laughs> It's McPhail in the backfield with Marino on third down and a long three. Over the middle, wide is Miller. First down at the 42. Willie Clay made the hit. Scott Miller, who played at UCLA, the first down. Scott Miller comes underneath. Everybody's looking at O.J. McDuffie because they know that he's going to throw the ball to O.J. McDuffie, and Miller just comes up underneath, and really no one there to pick him up. Four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Dolphins' last two possessions have started at the five or inside their own five. And Marino drove them 96 yards for a touchdown the last possession, and he's got him out of trouble now here on this one. Marino incomplete to Myers, covered by Terry Ray. Well, Miami, since Marino's been here, have never had a 1,000-yard rusher. It's been Marino's arm. That's been the hope at the start of each year. While the other top quarterbacks, Kelly's had seven, Elway five, Aikman with uh, Emmett Smith, of course, Warren Moon, they've all had a 1,000-yard rusher, but not Dan Marino. So what would this team be like should... Uh, the magical Marino have that kind of running game. Well, a lot of it's Dan Marino's fault for being so good. <laughs> I mean, like, why run it when you have him at quarterback? And, it, and that's one of the reasons they didn't have such a running game. Second and ten, and it's Parmalee protecting the ball to the 49, a gain of seven. Third down and three, Miami. Willie McGinnis dragging down the ball carrier. That's the most years without a thousand yard running back in the NFL in the current string. Hey, wow, hey. that's an amazing it is. number. I'm amazed. I, I tell you, you think you'd luck into one somewhere down the road, but uh, it, it says a lot of things. It tells you they haven't been patient enough with their running game, but also it makes games longer when you throw it. Your defense wears down. That's why the Dolphins have lost so many games these past years in the second half of them when they were leading. Deja Barr and Parmalee sharing their top duties today, and this is McPhail, who is unable to make the first 
touchdown and the flag goes down and as they uh, go the flag just in case you're wondering the last rusher for a thousand plus for Miami was a Delvin Williams against the Dolphins undoubtedly to be declined by New England. There he is Delvin Williams and the great Larry Zonka and Mercury Morris are the only three ball carriers in Miami's 30 years to rush for a thousand or more. Boy, Zonka, just just the very name conjures up images of just plowing for another wow. first down. John Kidd the punt. Meggett, who has returned six punts for touchdowns since he left Towson State to go to the New York Giants and New England. Back at the 10. Low liner. Meggett at the 12. Gets a block. Speed of that tackle. 41 yard punt, nine on the return. Frank Wainwright, a tight end, the tackler. Feel the power. Welcome back to South Florida. That's Curtis Martin, who had uh, many big games last year. The last five of the season for over 100 yards. He rolled up 142 against Miami in one of those games and today held to 2.4 per rush. You're going to like what Bill Parcells said to Curtis Martin. The first day ever walked out into a practice field with the New England Patriots. He said, hey, Martin, are you coming out here with football cleats or high heels? Because I don't want a tippy toe runner. <laughs> so <laughs> Curtis came out with cleats on. Let's with his team down by two touchdowns. So is to Will Moore and it's ruled a catch at the 31 yard line. A gain of about 10. We'll see if it's enough for a first down. This is just an outstanding catch if it is enough and if he does in fact stay in bound. Most important thing does he have control of the ball. Watch his hands. He's got the ball. He touches the official is right there. Excellent. I think it's an excellent call. Both feet down. They touch. He's in. They're right there. They call this one right. Laura played three years in the Canadian League with Calgary before coming to New England a season ago. Now Martin dragged down in the backfield by Tim Bowens. Bowens, the big number one pick of the Dolphins a couple of years ago out of Mississippi. Now let me, you know, Jim Gray said, Jim Gray said that, that Parcells was very calm in the locker room. Now, he said, they're not doing anything to us. Take a look at this play with Bowens. Yes, they are. They're knocking them off the line of scrimmage, and they're creating havoc in the backfield for New England. They can't run the football. Parcells checks the clock. A minute and a half remaining in the third quarter. Second and 11 for Bledsoe. And down he goes. Number 23 shooting through. Robert Bailey, an extra defensive back, along with Daniel Stubbs. The third sack for Miami today. Stubbs, Entman, Bailey. Daniel Stubbs, who was drafted by San Francisco out of the University of Miami, Florida, as a second round pick eight years ago. We could see Robert Bailey coming from the top of the screen. Nobody could account for him. That's why he got to the quarterback so fast and got the sack. Third and 19. But fourth down and about 11, and the punting team on. Zach Thomas made the tackle. And the fans cheer the defense. Well, it was a simple blitz right there, and New England had the wrong pass play called because one blitzer comes, they can't pick him up, and Ben Coates has to adjust his route for just a short game. O.J. McDuffie drifts back as Tom Tupa in the punt. Only the second punt today for New England. Spiral McDuffie at the 26 and hit down at the 33 yard line tackled by Larry Wiggum 44 yard punt eight on the return a reminder next Saturday at 430 
You football fans will be uh, want to be aboard NBC Sports World to find out who is the most versatile back in the NFL. Who's the fastest man in the NFL? NFL run to daylight. You'll see some of the game's top running backs. You'll see uh, Curtis Martin, Emmett Smith, Thurman Thomas, and others compete. It's a series of events. Test speed, strength, agility, pass catching ability. That's NFL run to daylight next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern on NBC. I was there, you know. Well, don't tell us. No, I'm not oh. going to tell you. I had to demonstrate all the moves for everybody, though. Yeah, right. I did. First down at the 34 for Miami. Final minute of the third quarter. Abdul Jabbar breaking a tackle. Makes something out of nothing. Games five. That's probably the final play of the third quarter. Chris Slade made the stop for New England. So three quarters in the book here in South Florida. Miami leading 24-10. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Welcome back. We open the fourth quarter with Miami in the lead, 24-10. They started the scoring with a 70-yard touchdown interception fumble. Second and five for the Dolphins as Marino hands off to Abdul-Jabbar. Short yardage. Let's take a look at Miami the last few years and how they have performed by month. This is the last four years, September, October, very solid. But in the last two months of the year, playing under 500 ball. What does that tell you, Phil? Well, it tells me everything we've been talking about today. The running game, the defense stays on the field way too long in most of their games. And when it gets down, when they're ahead, like we said, late in the game, fourth quarter, they can't sustain by running, keeping the other team off the field, so they lose. So Jimmy Johnson says, we're going to run the ball, and they have been very effective today. Third down and short. The throw to Miller. Complete. Almost a tough catch for Scott Miller, covered by Ty Law, and the Dolphins will have to punt. One other point, though. We came down here after the Miami Dolphins last year. They were 5-0, and and we, they were playing Indianapolis. Had them at 24-3 to at halftime, Dick. And the problem is they could not run the football at all in that ball game. You're right. Couldn't Indianapolis Colts came back, win it in overtime, and beat them, and then they just went on that slide. Costly in many ways, including the head coach's job. John Kidd. Beautiful spiral. Megan at the 12. Out of bounds he goes. 14 minutes and some change remain. New England down by two scores. NBC is brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. By the U.S. Army, be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. By the new Coors Light White Mouth Can, tap the Rockies with a smoother pour. And by United Airlines and its more than 50,000 employee owners, come fly the friendly sky. Back in Miami, where the Dolphins lead 24-10. Bledsoe from his own 14. Goes to the out, and a broken tackle as number 81, Hassan Graham, uh, skips down the sidelines to the 37 before Lewis Oliver can make the stop. 23-yard play. Well, the weakness of this Miami Dolphin defense on first down, these outcuts, Hassan Graham doing an excellent job there, and Terrell Buckley being a little over-aggressive must make that tackle right there after the 10-yard catch. Did you hear Ditka in the pregame show? said, WR, if Terrell Buckley can tackle. <laughs> That's what he said. Let's go. Underneath to this side, and another catch by Graham right at the sticks. They're going to rule him out of bounds at the 46-yard line, a yard shy of a first down. So Graham back-to-back -back catches the uh, former Georgia star. And you see right there again, J.B. Brown slipping and falling, but wide open. And even Hassan Graham trying to turn up the field, slipping to the, the field. Even though it's dry right here, it rained last night, it's very hard, but the top layer is a little moist. That's why you see so many players slipping. Wrong cleats. So six for seven in the second half after throwing a 50% first half. Reverse to Jefferson. Jefferson speed gets it down and he fumbles again, but it goes out of bounds. He's ruled down and he may be ruled out. He hasn't moved. He was smothered. What a hit on Sean Jefferson wow. by Zach Thomas. 
You can understand why he would fumble that time. Yeah, on I that hit. But I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you something. I mean, if you're gonna run a reverse, why why this guy? I mean he's fumbled twice and now he's fumbled for the third time. I know the hit is there by Zach Thomas. Number 54, here comes the hit. Oh, I mean that's shoulder to shoulder. He goes down, the ball comes out. That is a fumble. He's out on the way down. It looks like Sean Jefferson on the way down has already been. Oh, it's yeah, helmet to helmet right there. I mean, that's just a great play by Zach Thomas. I mean, this guy, the one thing that Jimmy Johnson told us about him is, is watch this, watch 54 come in and, and, and mm. just level Jefferson. But the thing about Zach Thomas, he said, he is going to make mistakes, but he's going to be where the ball is. He may miss a tackle or two. He didn't miss this one. Sean Jefferson's head. Just watch what happens when Zach Thomas hits him. He, and I think Phil's right. He was out on the way down. Watch his head go back and away, and the ball's just coming out. Now that is not a fumble, but I mean, he was just that helmet to ear hole. Here it comes. His head just snaps. That is a solid hit. Sean Jefferson's left arm, left hand reaching uh, for the attendant. That's in a way, in his own way, as a signal for his family at home to know that he's got, you know, strength in that arm and that. It isn't serious. That's um, perhaps his way of communicating to his loved ones uh, watching. Back to the action. First down. New England trailing 24-10 from the 48 of Miami. Bledsoe out of the backfield. Sam Cash gets a rare chance. The fullback, primarily a blocker out of Penn State, close to a first down, and uh, does have it inside the 38-yard line. Thomas, another tackle, along with Gene Atkins. I saw Ben Coates go in motion, a little spring in his leg. Something like this inspires the team to go on. If you remember after the touchdown with Ben Coates, when he showed Parcells, he put one finger up, like this is the first touchdown. We need two more. Plenty of time. Over 12 minutes remain. First down, Patriots. Thomas on the blitz. They pick it up. And it forces Bledsoe to throw high and long. Troy Brown on the near sidelines. The target covered by J.B. Brown. Well, the Miami defense tired, tired of seeing these passes to the outside on first and second down, so they change it up. They send the blitz, put some pressure on Drew Bledsoe. He has to unload a little before he's ready. Incomplete pass. Cash doing a good job of picking up the books and linebacker. Jimmy Johnson's debut in the NFL with Miami. His team leads 24-10. 12 minutes left. Bledsoe. Lofts it high for Coates. Terrible pass. Intercepted out of bounds by Oliver. Boy, I'll tell you what, you hit that one on the head. I mean, that, you talk about a terrible pass. I mean, that was awful. There was no chance for Coates to get it. Lewis Oliver is just trying to hold on to the ball. Now, he wasn't trying to throw that away. No, he was not. And he just, it's just offline by about 10 yards because if he throws it in the inside, it might be a touchdown. Lewis Oliver was outside, kind of fooled on the play. And Drew Bledsoe, just bad judgment where to throw the football. Third and 10 from the Miami 37. Blitz. He hits Megan, but shy of a first down at the Miami 29. So Bill Parcells trailing by 14, doesn't have much of a choice here. Fourth down and about two. Trailing by a 24-10 score. Well, they're going to go for it. If there's a bright spot, it's Megan. I mean, his oh, guy yeah. does everything. Every time we ever see these guys with Megan, he, when he was with the Giants and with New England, this guy does everything for you. Jimmy Johnson sends in two linebackers and takes out two defensive backs. I say they blitz it. Timeout. Let's up. It's an interesting and most times fourth and two you sit in heavier linemen. Johnson goes to linebackers. We'll be back. Herman Thomas, Rodney Hampton, Curtis Martin, and more. Eight elite NFL running backs in a test to see who's best as they run to daylight. Plus, who's the league's top speed burner? The NFL's fastest man settles the score on Sports World next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern on NBC. Critical spot in this game with New England trailing by two touchdowns, a fourth down, and two at the 29. Coates in motion. Letso can't complete it. No one there. Zach Thomas, a 
applied the pressure up the middle. The middle linebacker, and this rookie from Texas Tech, picked in the fifth round, has been brilliant on his 23rd birthday. I'll tell you one thing. I mean, when you look at Zach Thomas here, the blitz is on, and there is just no place to go. They sent too many people out, and not enough people stayed home. Nobody even blocked Zach Thomas, and Drew Bledsoe throws it away. But let me ask you something, both of you guys. When was the last time you saw the Miami defense play this well? Probably never. <laughs> no, I mean that. I mean, because it's a different defense. The attitude, the coaching is a little different. You're saying never, meaning the last 10 years or so. As long as I've been following it, I've never seen it play probably this sound and give you a few different looks, but the base defense they're playing today, it's, it might be the best I've seen it. And some of the folks here would say, well, the killer bees defense uh, in the early 80s and, of course, going back to the glory years in the 70s and the perfect season. But uh, in recent memory, certainly this has been Jimmy Johnson has shown why he's so highly regarded as a coach. He's, he's made this team. Many felt that Johnson was going to get his uh, head handed to him here. Well, he said, my defense, he's told a lot of people, my defense is going to fool this league because we're going to do a little better than people expect. They've held New England to 195 yards today. Marino to McDuffie and a flag. Ty Law just a little premature in his contact. I don't know if it's just me up here, Phil, but when I look at Marino sometimes and he makes that throw when he sees that defensive guy so close to his receiver, he seems to pick out the guy. I mean, it's Last almost like an here. instinct. On the defense, the cornerback. First down. That he knows he's going to get a pass interference call. And it just seems that way because O.J. McDuffie was covered. Yeah, he's grabbing his arm before the ball's there. Marino knows. I'm telling you, he knows. He knows. <laughs> of course he does. A lot of times you don't get that call, but that time he did. First, it was down, at, first down at the 35 for Miami oh, with 10 and a half minutes up. remaining. 24 10 the score. Look at that. He almost submarined that pass. Complete to Stanley Pritchett, the rookie fullback. He has thrown three quarters, sidearm, and now he's going on. He's doing an Eldon Auker down. Here. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> hey, as a quarterback in the National Football League, you're going to have to make up ways to throw it sometimes. And right there, Dan doing the old sidearm. You're right, almost a submarine. Well, he saw Slade coming, and he knew he was going to get hit. But he said, well, almost got me. You know the thing about this? See, this is what we're talking about, the run game earlier. Now, you can run early in the ball game, but now when you need to run and control the clock, this is when they have to work on their running game. 75% hits for Marino. Here's point in the game nine and a half minutes to go you've got a 14 point lead and you've got to control the ball and the clock and watch this blocking there's Pritchett again coming out making an outstanding block and then Abdul Jabbar on his feet making the run to pick up the first down keeps the clock going keeps the ball moving and you see where they ran that football to the left side and Jimmy said we got to have success on the left side of the offensive line today they've had it. 79 yards now for the rookie Abdul Jabbar <laughs> Javar again for about five to the 43, 42 yard line. Devin Wyman and Monty Brown, the tacklers. But Paul, you say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, that one goes out because this offensive line, which has never been noted to be physical, is showing us today after a training camp of preseason, they don't mind getting in there and just button a few heads. Well, every time we ask an offensive lineman, and I know Phil always looks at me, would you rather run block or pass block? Dick, what do they say? They always say run block. You bet. Because they're the aggressor there. And instead of taking the punishment, uh, falling back to protect the pass. That's the point. Javar. As they wear down the New England defense, another first down Miami. There's one thing they got to work on, though. This is new to him running the football. Dan Marino getting this late in the game. Abdul Javar is going to come out. Parmalee replaces him, and the fans on the near side give him a hand. And they're standing, some of them. 
97 yards rushing for the rookie from UCLA. I'm not kidding you. When I saw Jimmy in, uh, Jimmy Johnson in, in, in Chicago, he said, I don't know anything about this guy. I mean, he looks good on one play, then he gets hurt, and he goes and sits on the sidelines. Even Marino told us that. Now it's Parmalee, the veteran, and it's as if the Patriots were waiting for Parmalee to come in to punish him as Wyman and others make the stop. And I'm, you know, I'm not knocking this guy, and Jimmy wasn't either. He said, I just don't know what he's going to do. He makes a super play, and then he goes on the sidelines, and he's, he's got a nick here, a nick there, and he said, but then, I guess the last couple of games, he came on and in practice, and Marino said, we know he can run. He's had a pretty good high school uh, team, Paul, at Dorsey High in L.A., Keyshawn Johnson, the number one pick from the Jets, and this guy on the same team. That's a bit unfair. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't win a game. Yeah, but <laughs> they did. They yeah, did. by less than 40. Third, second down, and uh, close to 15 as Marino throws it away. Closest was uh, Ricky Reynolds, a cornerback. Theo Sangapulatelli was in there to apply pressure. I think actually old Devin Wyman knocked the ball down. But when he walked in the room, all the lights went out. I mean, I never, that guy is huge. Yes, he is. There he is, 6'7 and 307. He's got a waist about 38. I mean, he looks like he could carry a lot more. A little saggy now, but when we saw him, <laughs> it was air conditioned oh. and cool. That's right. <laughs> a little saggy. Third and 15. And uh, whistle before the snap. That usually means offense for five and James Brown Boy, this moving. Half, start, number 76, five yards, it's still third down. See, and you know, we talked about how they're moving the ball and how they do things, but here they are, you know, there's still almost seven minutes to play, Phil, and they're down now down into a third and 20 situation. But Paul, the big thing is, even if they don't score in this drive, they ate up a lot of time, got some good first downs, the running game did it. So they've accomplished a lot right for this for the Miami team right here in this drive. Four and a half minutes so far on the drive. And yet if you're a New England fan you can play what if it, you know the score may be a bit misleading three turnovers two fumbles and were bounced right back to Miami both for touchdowns. Marino from the blind side that could be ruled a fumble. No now they're saying incomplete his arm was going forward and Marino just happy all the limbs are in the same place. But Dick my big point is what if. Well, Miami had something to do with those turnovers. So, and McGinnis had trouble getting in and getting pressure on Dan Marino all day that time, just showing his speed and quickness and beating Richmond Webb. And that's the first time today he's had a chance to hit Dan Marino. John Kidd in to punt, just try to pooch one as Megat stands inside the 10. Megat fair catch at the nine yard line flag is down back at the line of scrimmage against Miami only number 53 of the kicking team 10 yards repeat fourth down Larry Izzo the free agent rookie from Rice who was the second man to make the team holding as uh, New England put on a punt block and uh, he made sure that it didn't happen but held in the process. Let me let me guess who the first guy was that made the team. I think it might have been that number 13. Uh, Jimmy Johnson said hey a couple of weeks to go let's send all down. One guy's made the team Reno. <laughs> and a week later he said Izzo where do you live? He said Houston call your parents you're the second guy because he loved the way he plays on special teams. That's right. Is that a thrill. Oh you know that just fired everybody up the team I'm sure to hear you get rewarded for working hard. Psychologist. And the Megan lets it go into the end zone and so uh, the penalty is worth about 11 yards as New England will take over at the 20 when we return. I'm Jim Gray. Well on this play Sean Jefferson was hurt. Initially the Patriots told us it was a problem with his collarbone possibly a fractured collarbone. The Patriots are now changing that diagnosis. They say he has a concussion. He's in the locker room for observation and he will not return. Dick. All right Jim. New England trailing 24 10 six and a half minutes remaining. From the 20 yard line, Bledsoe underneath to the tight end coach, but only five on the play as Thomas makes still another tackle, his ninth of the game. What a debut for him. Hurry up, offense. 
Second and five. Make it second and four as they spot it at the 26. That's up. The coach again. And the big tight end has 10 more and a first down. Gene Atkins and Sean Hill combine on the tackle. Phil, are these pre-called plays because all Bledsoe did was walk up the line and said go. No, you see him right now? He's telling them. He's yelling at the numbers. The system is pretty simple for the Patriots. Two numbers will tell everybody what to do. Six catches for Coates in the game and a touchdown. Oh, he caught him. Screen to Megan, and it's incomplete. You were saying they caught him because the defense, it was the perfect call for Against the blitz. Against that play. That's right. They're sending blitzers right here. Watch Sean Hill be coming there, and they let the defensive lineman come in. They got the perfect call on the screen against it. Look, Miami only has two people reacting to it. And Mega drops the ball. Well, a little outside, but if Dave Mega usually gets his hands on it, somehow he usually catches it. Second and ten with five and a half minutes left. New England trails by 14, and way outside as Troy Brown is the intended receiver. Bledsoe under pressure. You know what's amazing about a screen pass that I just I can never understand with offensive linemen. Why are they looking at the quarterback and why are they looking at the receiver and why aren't they face upfield to make a block? I mean that time to make it drops the ball, but they're all looking back at the quarterback. Yes. Third down and ten. One for eight are the Patriots on third down today. Let's go. Guns it complete. And John Burke, the tight end, has a first down at the 45 of the Dolphins. 19 on the play. Excellent job of the New England Patriots picking up the blitz. And there we saw Drew Bledsoe, something we didn't see last year. That's right. Moving in the pocket, bought himself some times. And he really threw a rifle. That was a that, rifle shot. That he can do. Throws this one long. Almost intercepted by Oliver, intended for Will Moore. And a flag down at the 32-yard line where Zach Thomas made contact with Hassan Graham. Yeah, well, Hassan Graham was on the ground. <laughs> That's called contact, too. Illegal contact. Illegal contact. Number 23 <laughs> of the defense. Five yards. Automatic first down. Well, Robert Bailey says, who, me? Yeah, Robert Bailey hit the receiver coming at him. He's 10 yards down the field, and he basically just, boom, comes up, fires into him, knocks him on the ground. That's a penalty. That gives, uh, stops the clock at 5.02. I think Lewis, I think Lewis Oliver's touched the ball from Bledsoe more than his receivers had. Well, Lewis has got to wear some sticky gloves because he can't catch it. <laughs> he's got the sure, he's dropped two sure interceptions, did get one, but he's dropped two today. One that led to the opening touchdown of the game, a 70-yard play. On first down, Bledsoe, a little too tall for Hassan Graham. What do I like what the defensive line just did? They, they were almost offside, and Aaron Jones, with, which Miami has the luxury of doing, they have seven defensive linemen, and they've been able to do, use them all. And what these guys did, they were almost offside. No, but almost. watch what they do. Let no, no, see. watch them slide. They slide down the line. He gets back onside. What are you well, looking at me? He got I, back onside. I think he was offside. Yeah, well, you're not throwing the flag. If you had a flag, you could throw it up here. All right, that's a good comeback. Get away. Just under five minutes <laughs> remain. New England trying to scramble for a score, and he has to throw this one away. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened. They're trying to run a screen, and Meggett can't get out. Bones just knocked him down and held him on the ground. They threw a flag, but Tim Bones is holding Meggett. That, that's good. a yeah. bit unfair. They're different weight classes, that's for sure. I would think so. Now, watch number 95. Here's Megan. He's trying to get out, 22. Watch this here. Is this? <laughs> oh, man. That's that's a body slam. That's a, that's a semi on a... <laughs> <laughs> on a Volkswagen. <laughs> no chance there. Oh, Tim man. Is, Tim is 310 plus, and Jimmy Johnson said that would, he just got tired and fell on that other guy. <laughs> First down on the five-yard penalty to the 35. That was a big play because that was third. It, was, it could have been third and ten coming up. Patriots have two timeouts left. Four minutes, 49 seconds remain. So a touchdown here, and New England will have some hopes alive. Bledsoe goes deep. Intercepted on the deflection by Terrell Buckley. 
intended for Troy Brown. Gene Atkins deflected it, and Buckley, who had three interceptions in the preseason, gets his first of the year. But what impressed me on that play right there, and it has all day long, is the pressure they put on Drew Bledsoe. But there you can see Brown getting behind the defense. Good job by Gene Atkins, the safety getting over there, and Terrell Buckley in the right spot. But here's what I think caused the whole problem for Drew Bledsoe. They're just pushing the pocket. Nobody's getting free. Look at that. Pushing, pushing. And then Tim Bowens finally gets free to get in there and makes Drew Bledsoe throw it before he's ready. Oh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Marino back on offense. Jabbar just needs a couple of yards to hit the century mark in his debut. 98 yards today. That would be a pleasant story for him. He's outside. He's got two. He's got four. And goes over the century mark. Ricky Reynolds makes the tackle. I tell you, they should put that up on the scoreboard because this place would go crazy. And it's been they a long, did. Did they? Right. It's been a long time since they've had a hundred-yard rusher here in one game. And I mean, it's 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 really a nice thing to see. This young man has played very well today. Of course, the offensive line has blocked extremely well. Well, that and, and really all the rookies for the Miami Dolphins that were in this game all stepped up and had good, solid football games, and that's the reason why they're leading. Four turnovers have haunted uh, the New England Patriots, and Reno and Hayes taking advantage, and Jabbar squirts to a first down at the 31, and uh, at the risk of belaboring the point, this is what Miami didn't have for many years, a running game that could run out of clock with a lead. Monty Brown makes the stop. A reminder tonight, Dateline Sunday, the president's top political advisor caught in a scandal. Why did this story surface when it did? And just what's in those red-hot home movies? Watch Dateline NBC following this game on most NBC stations. To be seen at its regularly scheduled time out on the West Coast. First down for Marino. The clock continues to run. And so does Javon. As he gains five more. Phil, I'm going to tell you, it, 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 when after this game, I would love to have a conversation with Marino. He's going to love what happened in this ball game. I mean, this is the type of ball game that he likes. I mean, he does not. It, many breakfasts he's broken. It's not important for him to come out here and throw for 400 yards. It's important for them to win number one. They control the football, and that's what they can do. Oh, I think you can appreciate it more now, late in his career. But the big thing it does too, it also. Takes away the wear and tear on Dan Marino. He can still be fresh as this year goes along. This this running game is only going to help him. Bernie Parmalee replaces Jabbar. He stopped two yards shy of a first down. You saw Jabbar come out with 115 yards rushing today. As the clock ticks down toward the two-minute warning. And timeout called by New England. They have one remaining. Curtis Martin, who going back to last year rushed for 100 yards five consecutive games only 23 yards today and Abdul Jabbar not only over the century mark but a solid average 4 4 that's what's impressive when you can when you you know you look at the numbers and, and, and you know a lot, a lot of times they are inflated but you look at, at Jabbar's numbers 4.4 yards every time he touches the ball on the average now all you got to do is give it to him three times and here's the other statistic that underlines the game story for those just joining in. Jabbar carried the ball 26 times. Marino threw the ball 21 times. Wow. You know what was surprising? And, and I, I looked at Phil's face yesterday. We were talking to Marino, and he said, I've never had a problem with my arm. Yeah, my arm has always been strong. Even as many balls as he's thrown, he's broken every record there is to break. Well, this year he'll go over 4,000 completions and over 50,000 yards. First man, and probably next year he'll hit his 400th touchdown pass. But it's a running game today. Took it off to a different run right here. And it didn't work. Now, I tried to say earlier, Dick, he's got to learn to, when they get ahead like this, to look at that 25 second clock and run it down to one or two seconds. Third timeout used by New England, so their allotment is uh, now been utilized with 2:09 left and a fourth down coming up. 
Well, you can't blame Martin. Uh, the Patriots fell behind early, 10 to right. nothing. And uh, the game strategy changed with uh, New England always being behind. Never really close. You know, I got we've seen New England, but I got I, I really do. I, you know, this weather down here, you walked out on this field about 11 o'clock this morning, it almost wow. fell down. <laughs> hey, yeah, I tell you what, it was the hottest field I had ever walked on. And of course, I didn't play a lot down here in Miami. We went to the Redskins, to the Dallas Cowboys on AstroTurf and that enclosed place. And this was the hottest surface I, I ever walked out on as a, well, as a player. Well, they've already confirmed in 30 years of play here, this is the second hottest day this uh, early September date, where the uh, temperature on the field was well over 100. Megan on the fly. One of his many valiant receptions of a punt to the 34-yard line. That takes it to 159. The two-minute warning. Miami by 14. Next Sunday, what? it's the Chiefs and the Raiders capping off a big week of NFL football. Next Sunday on NBC. Kansas City winning that one with the overtime interception by James Hasty. We'll be at Arrowhead Stadium and looking forward to sharing all the action with you. I, really, I had an opportunity to talk to Marty Schottenheimer a couple days ago and he said, you know, I said, you're Houston, it's probably gonna, not going to be many people there. He said, Paul, I'm going to tell you, they are a very good football team. Yes. He said, everything we've seen about them, they, you know, they may be going someplace else, but they're still a good team. They're, they're young, they're well coached, they run a defense that's hard to really get ready for. They do a lot of blitzing and and Kansas City was lucky to get out of the victory today. You bet. But so looking at the loose defense protecting against the pass and it's almost intercepted <laughs> by Sean Hill. Well if uh, Miami closes this out it'll mean for Jimmy Johnson his ninth straight win going back to his Dallas days the last time a Jimmy Johnson team lost in the NFL we were there. At Texas Stadium on Thanksgiving Day, the Leon let play in the snow that led uh, to defeat to these Miami Dolphins. This would make it nine in a row for them. Let's <laughs> all his arm appeared to be hit as he released that one and could incomplete. At the conclusion of this game, uh, plans are that we'll switch you out to the West Coast for the completion of the Chargers and Seahawks. 29-7 San Diego uh, at the point and uh, we'll update you as to how uh, San Diego and Bobby Ross and Bobby Bethard's team uh, got started today. Dennis Erickson had those Seahawks uh, flapping their wings at the end of last year but unable to come up with any significant points today. Bledsoe breaks one tackle. Still with a chance. No one open. Has to with it. Oh, there could oh. be a penalty there. They really rode him unnecessarily, Robert Bailey, but no fly. Well, the guy that, they, they, that we're really looking at is Entman, number 94, at the end of the play because he does get his hands on Bledsoe out of bounds. Fourth sack for Miami today. Watch here. Watch, see 94 come out. Now, he sh pushes him there, but not no, enough. That's... Bailey's there. That's a good play. Good that's call. a tough. Yeah, it's a tough call. I'll, I'll tell you one thing play. that Jimmy Johnson will be working on this week, guys. Was well, defensive that? backs catching a tip drill. Yeah, that's good. That's right. Because they have dropped a few interceptions. 134 left. Batted in the air, and then Bledsoe knocks it down on fourth down, which means Miami takes over on downs. If he'd have caught it, well, maybe not enough room to gain 10 yards anyway. No. He got caught it and he got killed. Yep. So he says, this thing, we got 15, we have 15 more games. Let me just knock this baby down and get out of here. Yeah, there's a defensive lineman. You're going to see the ball get tipped up in the air. Again, a blitz by the Tim Bowens. Knocks it up in the air. And look if he catches it. Entman. Steve Entman, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wise decision by the quarterback. There will be another day. Well, That's watching right. in North Carolina, and I'm sure rooting for the Miami Dolphins, is uh, the immortal Don Shula. 26 years ago, he took over in Miami, and President Nixon was the head of state. Neil Armstrong was about to was walking on the moon, and Woodstock and the Mays and Mets, and were winning. Lou Alcindor, to be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, was at UCLA, and Paul McGuire was turning 50. Is that right? And, but, but not only that, though, he was averaging 44 and a half yards a kick. 
Wow, really? With the I, Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I missed I missed uh, winning the Pontiac Championship that year by one tenth of a yard. Ten Dennis Party, I think it was. Yes. Uh, How do you remember that? You good? I followed your career closely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't you swore you that. would never lie to me. Second down and 11. Final uh, minute and with no timeouts left for the New England Patriots. A couple of kneel downs and then we'll be switching you out to San Diego. And of course as part of that uh, also a recap of all the scores of this first Sunday in the National Football League. Well final volleys here for Jimmy Johnson uh, high high grades indeed I, I don't know could Jimmy Johnson even expect this team to come out here and, and play this well today I, I'm a, I thought they would play hard and be organized but honestly I thought New England was the better team but they showed more enthusiasm and they made the plays when they counted Abdul Jabbar 115 yards rushing to underline Johnson's season game plan we're going to run it he did and he has his first win in Miami beat the Patriots and now let's go to San Diego Jim Lampley Bob Golick the Chargers and the Seahawks at the Murph well, we can tell him how we're gonna try to spoil Jimmy Johnson coming out part of the day you all right yeah well you look thrilled he must be running you I heard he was running you yes he is <laughs> what's going on <laughs> Jimmy Johnson stood at the center of the pro football universe, and on opening day, it was his team that grabbed the share of center stage. Bledsoe, he's looking. He throws on the slant. Oh, loose arm. Oh! It off. He's at the 40. The 50. Down to the 40. Cutting back at the 35. The 30. 25. Down to the 15, and they get him at the 10-yard line. Sean Hill picked it up. He's in for a touchdown. Johnson's twin loves are a swift defense and a power running game. The Dolphins have not had a 1,000 yard rusher since 1978. And Kareem Abdul Jabbar, number 33, became the first Miami rookie to rush for 100 yards since 1989. OJ in motion right, handoff. Kareem again off the right side, he's in. Touchdown, Dolphins. Another rookie, fullback Stanley Pritchett, number 36, paved the way for Abdul Jabbar's first NFL touchdown. Hey, nice job. That's why you run that football. A new star was born. And an old hero was reborn. That's why you pick up that first and win it. Oh, we're all right. We're all right. The call came for a defense that was robbed of its marquee players by free agency. But the young unit responded, especially rookie Zach Thomas, number 54. Drew Budsoe was ineffective except for this touchdown to tight end Ben Coates. While the Patriots withered under the fierce South Florida sun, it was a day at the beach for the Dolphins. Nothing's wrong, but we want to, hey, we want touchdowns. That's how you blow them out. You get touchdowns. That's how you win the game. Come on, Bosso! Let's go with that defense! Dan looking, pumps once, now tucks it down, now throws. He's got Pritchett. He's at the five. He's down to the one. He fumbled the ball. Oh, touchdown! If luck is the residue of grand design... Touchdown! I told you it was a touchdown! Reading the runs. Well, Lewis really played an outstanding ball game. Besides, you know, getting a couple of turnovers you know like he did right here with the interception he broke underneath the slant route he anticipated in fact he told J uh calvin jackson before that and jb brown he said listen i'm gonna go for the pick he went for the pick now the only thing is he fumbled the football <laughs> when mega catches up to him but uh, sean hill was right there to score the touchdown and, and so oliver really played well uh, and really happy the way he performed zach thomas we've been talking about him all preseason he certainly stepped up in his debut nine tackles and a sack he was everywhere, Jimmy. Well, you know, Tony, you can sum him up with one phrase. He is a football player. He knows how to play the game. He loves playing the game. He can play pass defense. He can make tackles. And the big and, hit. Oh, he made a big hit there on Jefferson. Knocked him out of the ball game, put him in the hospital, and actually caused a fumble there. And Zach's really a fine football player, and I think he's going to be a good player for a long time.
They made big plays all day. You preach this. They made plays when they had to, coming up with the play in crucial times. Our guys were around the football, and they did make plays. You know, gave the offense a great field position, and it also stopped some drives, kept them from scoring. The only time they really scored is when they had a big kickoff return. All right, let's talk about the offensive side of the ball, and another great debut by the rookie, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Well, we've got to talk about Jabbar because, you know, he had an impressive performance, 115 yards, but we've also got to talk about Larry Bechtel and Richmond George, the offensive line coaches, and that offensive line. We challenged Keith Sims and Richmond Webb before the game. We said, hey, we're going to run right behind your big rear ends, so you better <laughs> knock them off the ball. They and were, they did. And now. they were in shock when the running plays kept coming oh. in. Richmond and Keith kept looking at each other going, what is going <laughs> on here? And the other guy, Stanley Pritchett, the other rookie. You know, you know, the fullback in our offense, a lot of time, he gets you know unrewarded, but he's rewarded right here with a big reception for 52 yards coming off the goal line. You know, you know, Gary said, hey, we're going to run the, the off-tackle play. I said, no, throw the football. Sure, McPhail. McPhail, 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 McPhail catches, McPhail. makes a big first down going in there for the score. But we were able to throw the football all the way down the field, threw it to Pritchett. Now, he fumbled, and that's a rookie mistake. But uh, Scott Miller was able to get the recovery for the touchdown. When you consider your running backs were responsible for nine of the 16 catches that were made, it's, you know, it's... 73 with that your premium incident now look we don't even get matching shoes so how does that make you feel no good no good wide right oh sorry so i'm not some 6'5 280 pound stud we still gotta go out there with three seconds left and bing drill it right between the uprights and look who makes the 11 o'clock news the quarterback i knew i should have been a jockey a 96 season kicks off labor day weekend mr del greco you're next please There's a new sheriff in town. And his name is Jimmy Johnson. Go ahead and wrap his ass up and trip the ball up. Let's go. Sure tackle. Summer camp under Jimmy Johnson is like receiving a letter from uh, one of the armed services and saying you have to go to Kuwait and probably f fight in a war or something, but we just don't have M16s or AK-47s, but that's probably the closest thing to it. Well, there's no question this camp's been a little, a little physical. Discipline, discipline. You gotta be disciplined enough to stay on sides. Discipline, let's go. Johnson has made wholesale changes to the Dolphins roster, but the overall won't be completed this season. Coming in and trying to straighten out some of the salary cap problem, uh, that doesn't happen overnight. You're able to bring in some players through free agency and through the draft that might help you, but uh, that's a two or three year thing before you can get the type of team that you want. Is this a dressing room? I mean, what you said about coming out here one second late. Okay. All right. I, I get it well, out the here. second thing, you didn't hear the second half of the speech. Coming out here half dressed. Where do you want this, Jimmy? In the den. Hey, where's my other one? Hey, careful. Does he really need all this goop? I guess. How about this hat and helmet? Keep the hat. Lose the helmet. Jimmy Johnson's made the move to the AFC and the NFL on NBC.